This video has been brought to you today by Skillshare. Wait until the outtakes of this video to find out more. Yes! I finally unlocked every single Smash character and I beat classic mode with every single one of them. Plus it only took me eight hours to realize you could skip the credit sequence. I think I'm ready to compete now. Ah, hey y'all, Scott here. Who are you talking to? What's up? Uh, well, yeah, I just finished off classic mode in Smash Ultimate with every single character. I'm ready to go for a few matches. Do you want to join in? Uh, what's in it for me? I'll send you a copy of Wii Music. Ah. And alcohol. <coughs> Lots of alcohol. <coughs> Great, so it's settled then. I hope you're ready for a butt whoop. Blipping whoop. Pig poop. I don't want to play anymore. Hey Caddy, I have a question for you. Yeah? Who is the best of the best of the best? Of the best? No! <laughs> Idiot. The best of the best of the best. Now with the extra of the best at the end. What was the question? Because that is the very question that Sony dared to ask on the back of the box for their 2012 sleeper hit on the PlayStation 3. Fortnite Battle Royale. Kirby Battle Royale. PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. And when we say sleeper hit, we mean the... I hit it in my sleep. And it's also a game that many a moon ago I actually reviewed and spoke positively about. It was the first ever episode of one of my old shows, Current Quickies, actually. Oh, you mean the show that you did with the Seor? What are you doing? I'm reminding myself to kill you if you ever say that again. Kior. Anyway, PlayStation All Stars is a strange, strange game indeed. <coughs> if you couldn't tell by just looking at it, this was Sony's 13 year late response to Nintendo's highly successful and brilliant Super Smash Bros. series, and oh boy, does it feel like a 13 year late response. Complete with perhaps the same level of content that Smash 1 had on the N64, but two console generations higher. However, like I mentioned at the time it came out, I really like this game. I even gave it an 8 out of 10, so despite the laughing stock status this game has nowadays, Days. Today, I still revisited it in high hopes. And what about you, Scott? Got any history with this ageless classic? Finally, somebody asked. You know, everybody has their PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale story. I'm happy to have an outlet to let it all loose. I remember hearing rumblings of the game when it was under the codename Title Fight, and I still don't know which name for this game is worse. The pure concept of a Sony version of Smash Brothers was phenomenal. If any company had a legacy of characters to combat Nintendos, Sony would lose, but they definitely had some of the most iconic characters in all of gaming at their disposal. I was still definitely interested to see where things were heading with the game. But just because it was a blatant copy of Smash Brothers didn't mean it couldn't have been just as fun or interesting as Smash Brothers. When the game finally released in late 2012, I saw that final roster and those somewhat mixed to positive reviews and said, Oh, this game isn't as good as Smash Brothers. I bought the game for $5 used and it makes for a great shelf piece. Great, so let's get things started. It can't be that bad, surely. We boot up the game and update. What? It looks like we have to wait an extra seven minutes before Battle Royale and Caddy. Well, goddammit. At least it's only an extra seven minutes, though. Surely it'll be worth the wait after all that. PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. Ah, here we go, the main menu. Oh, wait, wait, what's this? Uh, knowing how to play will greatly improve the experience. Oh, like with anything. Would you like to go to the tutorial? Well, I've played this many times before, actually, so I don't need to, thank you. Boy, Caddy, are you sure you don't want to play the tutorial? It's pretty quick. Uh, no thank you. I'm totally fine, thanks. Wait, what's this? Uh, knowing how to play will greatly improve the experience. Wait. Are you sure you don't want to play the tutorial? The, the bastard thing won't let me cancel it! Look at this! Come on, what's the bloody point of asking me if I'd like to play the tutorial if you're not going to let me not play the tutorial? Fine, if it's really that quick, let's just get it over with then. Use the left stick or D-pad to move. This is way too hard. Okay, well, aside from the obvious nonsense, to be fair, the reason they forced the tutorial on you is because the game is actually kind of all over the place with its controls. Moving around, jumping, grabbing items, and guarding works fine enough, but the barrier for entry for new players is way higher than something like Smash Brothers. In Smash Brothers, you move and jump with the sticks, guard and dodge with right trigger, and grab enemies or drop items with the left trigger and have two attack buttons. One for specials that also activates a final smash if you have one ready to go, and the other for standards, which also picks up and uses items. Along with this, using a special attack button with every different direction gives you a different attack, which usually have similar effects over certain characters depending on the direction. And using the regular attack button while jamming a direction on the stick gives you a powerful charge smash attack in that very same direction. Now, I know we just made it sound more complicated than Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> But trust me, this all feels totally natural during the chaos of Smash Brothers. It's really stripped back and you can figure out all of this stuff on your own because it just 
feels right. It doesn't overdo the controls to make sure that anybody can pick up and play it, but makes it responsive and fast enough that only a select few can master it. In PS All Stars though, every character has completely random attacks with two separate special attack buttons that often don't correlate or have any logical reason to be partnered with the direction that you press, the only one remaining consistent being the attack button. This makes remembering even just a few of the unique attacks for each character much more difficult than it has any right to be. And when you're in the middle of something like this, that's bad! And not Michael Jackson bad. Okay, maybe Michael Jackson back. While figuring all this out, you also try getting your head around the trigger buttons. Instead of single left and right commands to work with for something easy to access and remember along with both triggers on each side activating the same command, you need to use L1 for guarding and dodging while remembering that L2 is taunt and make sure to grab items with R1 instead of the basic attack button which you then have to press to use the item. And then R1 again to drop the item while remembering that the right stick is used to grab enemies for even more attacks that would normally be the same as the drop item button in Smash Brothers on the trigger. And be careful not to waste one of your incredibly valuable super attacks you spend the whole match charging up with the R2 button and <laughs> so what we're getting at is that this game is Smash Brothers, but worse. Huh, we're like two peas in a pod, aren't we? I hate peas. <laughs> okay, let's pull this back a bit. Here's the main menu again. Well, it's a menu. The desserts are fantastic. It's as basic as you can get for a party fighter like this, and there isn't much to mention with it. There's the solo mode for arcade matches and practicing, and a customization menu where you can unlock like one additional costume by playing the game or by buying the costume separately, and a tournament mode for online competitive play. Okay, that sounds fun. Let's go and check that out. Yeah, that's a great idea. Oh, really? Why? Because nobody will be playing! Well, shit, consider me another one of those non-online players. Look, I can't even access the online mode. Last time I played, this was when PS3 Online was free, but I guess that will change with PS4 online being locked out by getting a subscription to PS Plus. <laughs> PlayStation Plus. More like PlayStation Subtract. Typical PlayStation user gets locked out of online because he needs a subscription. Can't wait to play some good old fashioned Nintendo Switch games online for free tonight. Uh -huh. And what about this roster, eh? Isn't it? Average. To start with, even with the additional DLC characters, the amount of fighters for a PS3 game is less than what Super Smash Bros. Melee had on the GameCube. But as far as the choices of the characters go themselves, Meh, it could have been worse, I guess, but it certainly could have been better. The only ones I have major issues with are Evil Cole McGrath from Infamous, because he is exactly the same as normal Cole McGrath, but just with a Red right hand. Dante, because I have no idea why they didn't just use classic Dante from the original Devil May Cry, whose games were PS2 exclusive. And Fat Princess, because why? This is like the PlayStation Classics game lineup in the form of a fighter roster. Like, there are elements of the PlayStation legacy here, but in the end, half of these character picks I feel like marketing tactics. Get ready for the most off the wall thing you'll ever hear in a PlayStation All Stars review. Compare this to Smash Brothers. In Smash Brothers for 3DS and Wii U, they picked Mega Man and Pac Man as the two third party characters in the base game. And even with Smash Ultimate, we have Simon Belmont. These picks didn't feel like marketing tactics, mainly because when they were added to Smash, none of these characters had huge games on the horizon. They were added because fans wanted them and the pure legacy of the characters, not because of some new games they had coming out. You can play as new Dante in All Stars. I also don't know why anybody would want to play as Big Daddy when in the intro he gets destroyed by Sackboy dropping a banana peel. Is that why Rapture is in complete ruin? For all the big daddies sliding around into the walls from rogue banana peels. And what do you do when Nintendo takes your most popular character from another series? Use the other one that nobody liked. We've managed to avoid drowning. Well, okay, we can't play the game together online, so what can we do? I really don't care. Oh, thanks. Look, this was your idea. I'm just here to drink. Well, in that case... <sighs> The story mode! Oh god! So we've already covered what a pain in the arse it is to remember all the different random special moves for each character and how they often don't correlate to the direction you press when you just want to jump into a party match, but to be fair, the game at least works well once you get your head around all the different triggers and buttons. It's not broken. It just makes you want to play Smash instead. I mean, a lot of it does amount to just mashing every button on the controller until your fingers go green and scabs peel off, but at least it functions. If you happen to be all alone while you're busy running around beating up a serial killer clown as a cartoon rapping dog, you can choose to participate in the story mode sequences for each character, where all you do is look at still images for an intro, and then go from one match to the next, winning either by getting the highest score after three minutes or by being the first person to reach three super move knockouts. Wait. That's a super move knockout. Caddy, hold me. Oh, it's all right. Come here then. Oh, that's better. Yeah. Wait, how did you feel that? You don't want to know. So a super move knockout is what happens when you engage in successful combat. By landing combos and special hits, you build up your AP meter slowly through the match until you charge it to full. Which then, by hitting R2, allows you to do a super move to one hit kill any enemy on the screen and give yourself a point if you land it. The more powerful the basic attack you do, the more your meter goes up if you connect. You've got some moves that will even remove the AP charge from other opponents to give you a chance to steal it, and there are even some boxes to break in the stages sometimes containing more AP for you. And you can charge your AP meter up to three times 
even more powerful finishing moves, with the level 3 charge attack being essentially a guaranteed knockout, sometimes even multiple knockouts. Which is a good thing, because the more basic the charge attack, the easier it is to dodge or have interrupted by other players. This sounds like a good risk and reward system for players that want to try filling their meter and using it before time is up while avoiding other people killing them, but as you'll soon discover, this does have a major flaw that eventually ruins so many matches. But keep your pants on tight, we haven't gotten to that bit of the video yet, you scamp. I think my favorite thing about the game though are the stages. I mean, yeah, there's only 18 stages including DLC and one exclusive flat stage only for story mode, which again is much smaller in number compared to Super Smash Melee, but the way you'll be just going about your business and have a stage invaded by another game series to give you even more hazards to avoid is a really cool idea. God of War being invaded by Patapon, Ape Escape being invaded by Resistance, Parappa the Rapper being invaded by Killzone, Uncharted being invaded by Bioshock, hell, even Loco Roco being invaded by Metal Gear Solid. It's creative and charming and makes the matches that much more entertaining. Which is good because in terms of design, so many of these stages play out the same way. Mostly flat with a couple of platforms, and aside from the invasion hazards, there isn't much else surprising besides that. But you gotta admit, it's all worth it to see Kratos the God of War, standing in the middle of Loco Roco land with singing blobs and smiley face hills as he turns to the camera and says this. Prepare to jump! Perfect. And in terms of looks, well, it looks fine? I mean, many areas do look a little too blurry and lifeless in terms of color when they really shouldn't, like with the Jack and Daxter stage, but it does the job, I suppose. It kind of takes the Crash Team Racing approach of getting originally high detailed models of recognizable characters and COMPLETELY BASTARDIZING them in order to fit everything in the game to make it run at 60 FPS, and I'm really glad they did that for the sake of the fast gameplay, but it also means that Nathan Drake looks like if Gerard Butler was made of cheese. I agree, it's passable and works fine enough, but characters definitely don't have the same polish as they do in their original games. Every character has at least one or two little problems with their character design that makes them just look really cheap. And the design of the menus scream royalty-free desktop wallpaper. The visuals aren't terrible, but they just don't feel like they have a ton of love put into them. Scott? Yeah? Scott the Waz. The very same. Scott the Waz with the tiny little schnoz. It's not that small, is it? WHY DO THE COMPUTER PLAYERS CRAP?! I swear, there is absolutely no balance in this game when it comes to how the enemies behave. For this video, I did the story mode a few times with different characters on normal and hard mode, and even still, I was having some of the beginning levels kick my hairy ass while I breezed through the late game stages, and even the other way around. Even at the final parts of the game, sometimes it was totally brutal, and other times it was a complete joke and the difficulty level didn't seem to matter. What's going on here? You can even get away with looping the opponents into a juggle. They can't handle it. You know, you guys can double jump away from us or air dodge, or attack, or be good. Something else I personally don't like is how item grabbing works in this game. In Smash Brothers, you see an item, hit the normal attack button and grab it immediately. Here, there's this really irritating delay to picking things up which leaves you totally vulnerable for vital milliseconds. Combine this with a pitiful amount of randomly generated items to play with and I find myself not ever going for them unless I know I'm 100% safe to do so. And while on the topic of delays to actions, Sir Daniel Fortescue. Sir Daniel Fortescue. What in God's green abominable earth did they do to you in this game? One of the most adorably lovable and iconic PlayStation characters has been reduced to a guy that has basically no majorly powerful attacks to charge his meter that quickly, yet compared to other fighters, really slow activations of those low damage attacks. Big Daddy is slow, but he hits like a truck. Raiden is really fast, but he chip damages. So what went wrong with poor old- <laughs> I mean, even if you manage to finally charge your super attack meter to level one, you know, the only way you're gonna get a point, check out how useless it is. How much more situational could that possibly be? This shows off a fundamental flaw in how the game actually plays. By relying entirely on types of attack that have to hit opponents to charge your meter, Sir Dan is not built for this kind of game because of how sluggish he is with attacks and how slowly his meter goes up, only to then have his only chance to get a point wasted by it. This then makes some characters like Sly Cooper broken in comparison since his level 1 super attack is extremely fast, extremely wide, and extremely far reaching. Plus all of his basic and special attacks are fast, powerful, and varied for singular enemies and groups. And you can rack up the points ridiculously fast with him while Sir Dan is left behind where he belongs, dead and rotting in the ground. And this brings us to the rival battles in the story mode and how much they suck because of of this design choice. Now I hope you will listen to Scott when he told you to keep your pants on because this is the bit of the video he was telling you to wait for. I didn't listen. In concept, I love the rival battles. They make no goddamn sense at all and are feverishly entertaining. There's one with Sir Dan going head to head with the Colonel of the Hellcast in Kill Zone, and check out this rubbish in Kratos' story. My ice cream cone, stand aside. Pick that up and pay for it. The rest though? 
complete toss. I'm sorry, this is the most boring and worst part of the game by far. The idea here is to knock out your opponent three times before they get you three times, fine in concept, but when the entire core of the game is based on building up a meter to activate a finishing blow, you end up going around and around in circles for minute on top of minute because you can both dodge through finishers, jump over finishers and interrupt finishers, meaning that you used up all of your AP charge that you spent all the match charging up and need to essentially start the fight from scratch until you get a second chance to kill the opponent that you could just as easily miss. To give you more of a chance of hitting the opponent, you could wait for higher level super attacks, but with many characters this still doesn't guarantee a point because they can still be avoided, and only a few other characters like Heihachi have level 3 smashes that automatically knock out everyone on screen without you needing to do anything. But even if they all had a final super attack that acted like this, you still need to wait a ridiculous amount of time to charge and activate it three times in a row without your opponent getting you first. There's no tension to be had here whatsoever. It's not like, once again, Smash Brothers with its one-on-one -on -one fights, where it's never about how many hits you land or charging a meter to press another button and hope you get a point that determines the outcome of every match. Fighting in items in Smash Brothers only helps you win a match, but you still need to get your opponent out of the stage based on how well you attacked them with your body and other items that pop up to lower their weakness and make them more susceptible to flying out of bounds with your smash attacks, which, unlike PS All-Star Super Attacks, can be done whenever you want however many times you want. If you're really good you can win a match of Smash while your enemy is at minimum percentage weakness and while you're on the highest percentage weakness based on how well you can keep them off the center of the stage and force them out of bounds. And so if you're battling someone and both on ridiculously high level percentage weaknesses it then becomes much much easier for either of you to fly away with a pathetic attack and you feel the pressure as you know that any moment one hit can end either of you. The whole mood of the match in Smash Brothers evolves as your weakness percentage goes up and forces you to think differently about how you you attack and defend yourself as it all progresses. Here, you just beat each other up until a bar is charged, then hope you hit the other person and repeat. That's the only dynamic at work here, since it's the only way to gain points. So if a computer player can feel like they're reading your mind, you'll be stuck here for however old Jamie Fox is. Jesus, how does he look so good? You know what, I am totally bored out of my mind with this, and the bland empty stage is certainly not helping. I'd rather listen to James Hetfield singing Mary Poppins. <laughs> This then takes us to the final boss of arcade mode. Uh, what's he called? Oh, right. Huh. <laughs> Polygon man. I mean, yeah, he is a load of polygons. What else would you call him? At least he isn't as unimaginative as Teapot. Well, actually, Caddy, did you know this guy was Sony's first original mascot for the PlayStation 1? He was rejected by PlayStation creator Ken Kuduragi after he didn't like how he was shaded, and then ended up being replaced by other PlayStation mascots, much like some of the fighters you can play as in this game. So wait, he's the final boss in this game because PlayStation rejected him for literally any other character, and he's all pissed off about it and wants to get rid of all the other mascots. Uh, well... Yeah. Okay, that's brilliant. It's just a shame that the fight itself is easily the worst part of the game though. This ain't no master hand, no sir. You don't even really fight him, you just super attack all his minions that you've already fought over a dozen times up to this point, and then he firmly plants his stupid face into the arena and patiently waits for you to popple piggle piss him back to where he came from. This is then capped off by finishing the story mode with even more stale and boring still images for some reason, and then everything just stops. What a weird game. And for some bizarre reason, for that extra cherry on the cake of mediocrity, recording any footage of this game longer than half an hour long glitched up my Elgato software and caused it to process the recording for an hour longer than what it would usually take otherwise, meaning that between each story mode, I was stuck and unable to do anything with the game until it finished. Is Isaac Clarke pooping alphabet spaghetti? Now I do know this is most likely a problem with the HDMI splitter I have for my PS3 to bypass the HDCP settings so I can record from my PS3 in the first place, but I'm gonna pretend it's the game's fault because that's funnier. And after all of this, I go to record another story mode to see more awkward still images, fight the worst final boss in fighting game history, and then get told, How could this happen? None have beaten me until now. Why is he so surprised about that? He didn't even last a week before his own creators canned him. Furthermore, I've beaten him four times alone for this video. Is he missing a few polygons? Well, to be fair, Caddy, I'd be surprised if you beat me at something. Well, you know what, Scott? You're annoying. Do you know what else is annoying? Blood clot. That's who you are. Clot the was. Scott the clock. To close off with something remotely positive though, well, I do really admire how the game released at the time with a cross-buy and cross-play feature for the PS Vita. This was an awesome idea and it was also available with Sly Cooper 4 before Sony forgot the Vita even existed. I'm not bitter. You not only got a free downloadable Vita version of the game with the PS3 version, but also got the chance to battle other people on PS3 matches, but with your Vita. This is like prototype Nintendo Switch levels of cool. But in the end, that's all we'd both rather play on. 
<laughs> the Nintendo Switch. I mean, yeah, we've joked and roasted this game for all it does pretty averagely and how blatant it is in trying to clone Smash Brothers, but with weird changes to the gameplay that make it slightly worse, but I personally don't think this is one of the worst things I've ever played. It's alright, but it's not something I have any interest in ever revisiting. And when all is said and done, even though I've been a huge PlayStation fan since I was four years old, I'd rather just play Smash Brothers, so I guess that makes the game a failure in my eyes, whatever the case. There's only so many times I can bitch like the God of War, Heihachi Mishima, and a big daddy while playing as a kitten in Little Big Planet Land before I want to go back to Smash Ultimate and have babies with King K. Rool in his great golden tummy. <laughs> PlayStation All-Stars wasn't a bad idea, far from it. Just because it's copying Smash Brothers doesn't mean it couldn't copy it well. With its stupid mechanics, bland presentation, and whatever character roster, All-Stars, while not terrible, will always be labeled as a poor man's Smash Brothers. Sometimes I look back on myself from a few years ago and think, why did I say that? Why did I do that? And giving Sasper an 8 out of 10 is definitely one of those things that I regret. I mean, it's not awful, but it's not particularly good either. I can't be too hard on myself, though I mean, I actually liked Beyond Two Souls when that game first came out. That was a dark period in my life. Speaking of dark periods, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> What, well, you think I know how to end the video after that? Hello everybody, thank you for staying until the very end of this video, and the outtakes will be on in just a second. There's gonna be some from me and some from Scott, so stay tuned for that. And speaking of Scott, thank you so much, Scott the Waz, for joining in on this special episode of Calicarus today. It's been a pleasure working with you, been watching you for a very long time. I'm honored that you wanted to come onto the channel, so thanks so much for that, man. I'm gonna to link to him at the end of this video and in the description below, so go and check that out. And speaking of the description, there are some things in there that I would love to talk with you all about today. First though, a question. Do you want access to over 25,000 classes in anything you can imagine? Do you have any 2019 New Year's goals you'd like to accomplish but need a bit of help? Well then I highly recommend Skillshare, the sponsors for today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community that helps you fuel your drive for any hobby or even career that you can think of, including things like online marketing and even video editing right here if you were considering starting a YouTube channel but had no clue where to start. The ins and outs are all there for you and with an annual premium membership of less than $10 a month in total, or well there's other flexible tiers that you can choose from per month, you get unlimited access to any of these classes and can join in with the other 7 million plus people that are learning and fueling the creativity all over the world. And if you head to the first link of the description right now, my first 500 subscribers that end up clicking on the link will get a two month free trial. So first come first serve, have a go, have a look. Hopefully you like it, hopefully it'll help you. I really hope it does. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring and before I go, special thank you to every single person on the screen right now for supporting me via Patreon and even more of a special thanks to the top tier supporters from last month. Omama2, Basil, Carl Hakkinen, Gamerman, I Have a Portal Gun, Exopaz, Matthew Hubble, Mills Kahai, Brandon Brandon, Binary Code, Kirsten B, Cyberpunk Symphony, Nicole Ganara, Nathan Young, Victor Patrick Bauer, Robert Alamsha, The Game Shed, Daniel Leon, Braden Kenny, Jake Delahaye 2008, Mitchell Reed, A.D. Thornton-Smith, and Maximilian Ely. Thank you so much, every single one of you amazing people. What? Oh! What? <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, you mean the show that you did with the. Well, in that case. <sighs> too soon. <laughs> You're waving it about in the air as well. Oh, you mean the show that you. Oh, you mean. Oh, the. Oh, God. Oh, the show you mean. Oh, you mean the show where you did. Oh, me. Blech. Oh, you mean the show you did with the Seahor? <laughs> I'm gonna say Seahor. <laughs> Great, so it's settled. I hope you're. Why am I looking? I'm. I'm not talking to the camera. I'm talking to Scott on the phone. Oh, you mean the show the. You... <gasps> 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 <coughs> oh my god! <laughs> Don't worry. This is no, it's too gross. I just put them, get a little finger full in my mouth. They're all stuck together, I can't get them. Ooh. I've got the stuff to stop the giver, I can't get them out. Someone's peed in your mouth? No! Oh, I get it. <laughs>